Hello and welcome to the semifinals of Grand Prix Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm Brian David Marshall, joined by Pro Tour Hall of Famer Randy Bueller, and we are watching Pro Tour Hall of Famer Shuhei Nakamura playing against Nathaniel Smith, looking to take the Hall of Famer down a peg, have a story to take home, tell Good his luck. friends. Good luck to you, sir. You're going to need it. I haven't seen Shuhei around in a little while. But no, he's had, he's had a qu very quiet season. Seems to be completely in control of all the skills he's ever had. Great weekend for Channel Fireball, broadly construed, too, if you think about it. Yeah. Right, Shuhei and Ocho both make the top eight. Ocho and Nathan Holiday both clinch gold. Hain wins the GP Player of the Year to lock, lock up the world spot. He's playing Herald of the Pantheon, but it's Channel Fireball. Nah. It's doing really well here. <laughs> so trades with uh, Nantuko Husk, but Lanoir Empath keeps keeps the uh, top, top. fodder going. <laughs> Tops into a rock smaller, has another card that he'd like to be on top of his deck there. Could be a land, could be another. Yep. You know, could be a suppression bond. Yeah, it's nice when you see land creature with that. You can just. Yeah. Do I need a land? I'm going to get the creature for free. There is Blazing Hellhound. And that is, uh, well. There are a, <laughs> a bevy of options in wow. hand here for Shuhei Nakamura. He's got a he's got a heart beast he can play to Suppre go get another suppression field. But he's, he's already got a suppression, got a suppression field. Bond. Suppression bond, yeah. And that's what he does. Yeah, and he can suppression bonds with uh enshrouding mists up in case some burn spell comes flying down. Okay. Comes that's fire a pretty good answer from, from Nathaniel. Four, three. But in comes the Lanowar Empath. Here comes yeah, a Heart Beast. Beast. Searches up Crazy. Suppression Bonds. It's 2 5, right? Yep. Perfect for blocking a 4 3. It's just gigantic. I guess Shuhei's trademark 3-5 would be perfect for blocking <laughs> He's doing what he can with the tools available to him in this box. his hand, tries to find his play. Thinking about it, he knows Shuhei's got a suppression bond. Lenore empathing into Totem Guide Heart yeah. Beast has to be the best feeling in the world. <laughs> I mean, it's not what happened, but I'm just thinking about it. That was the curve. And you totem guide Heart Beast into Knightly Valor. And mm. Okay. What Plays a return centaur, milling ah, himself for four cards. That makes sense. There's a Rock Smallers. With a W untapped. Yep. Yeah. Rabid Bloodsucker. Drains both players for two. Revenge in hand for him. Hmm. 
could just attack with the rock smallers. Go uh, have a trouting nest to save it, eat something, whittle down the board. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, looks like the plan. And Smith should just block with a 4 3, right? I guess, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, you smell a trick, but okay. <laughs> he's going to play around the trick by blocking with everything. Yeah, but he's going to put the Rabid Bloodsucker and the Firefiend Elemental in front. He's going to take no damage, and he's going to kill two creatures. Doesn't get to renown his guy, but that's okay. He and traded a one mana trick for a renowned nine creature, mana yeah, worth of creatures. And, and a fly, yeah. Farika's Disciple joins the party. Yeah, I mean, Smith's attempt to play around the combat trick wound up getting him blown out even more. So Reef Soul takes down the Farika's Disciple and a gear, per gear Crafter grinds its gears, makes a token. Now, how about Gaia's Revenge? <laughs> how about Gaia's Revenge? It's like you could kill this if you'd like. <laughs> With all your guys. You could put your whole team in front to get to the five power necessary. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> has to. <laughs> yeah, technically, only a two for one. <laughs> So how many times has Shuhei two for one them now? Four? <laughs> Lanawar Empath, Totem Heart Beast, Entrouding Mists, and Gaia's Revenge. Yeah. Four two for ones. Right. And, and again, has been able to do this without like in, still has just these creatures sitting back in right. reserve. They're like queued up Those behind each other to go running into the red zone. Those are the cards he's up. That's the profit from a series of four two-for-ones. Shuhei also has more cards in his hand, right? Two to one? Yes. One of which is still the uh, suppression bonds. Which Nathaniel Smith knows about. I'd almost rather not know about it if I was in. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, it's okay. It's two cards to three cards. Still. Okay. Oh. Well, okay. Macabre Waltz. Get back then to go husk. Usually if... Feels like a two for one. Get back Thopter Engineer. Technically not card like. advantage, but yeah. yeah, throwing away that leftover land that you kind of don't need anymore. So there's the Nanchiko Husk. Which is free food in the Blazing Hellhound. But yeah, you just suppression bonds the Husk. Smash with the team. Get in for eight. Yeah, he's going to respond by eating. You should just eat both of them, right? There's no reason to let Shuhei have his enchantments in play. I mean, I guess Aramancer is the reason you might leave the enchantments in play, but Nathaniel may have more Macabre Waltz type cards as well. And is that an annoyed of champions up there? Sure, no problem. Yeah. Daniel Smith's like, okay. I see. I understand now. Yeah. Goes to Cyborg. There you see Dan Jordan playing against Ross Miriam on the other t on the other table. Dan Jordan needs to win this Grand Prix. Two Pro Tour invites hanging in the balance. Yeah, he already has one. Right. But, you know, if he, he can walk away from this Grand Prix with three invites. Pretty cool triple PTQ weekend. Huge However, event for him. Is that a turbo match? We're not recording that, right? No, no. That's I should just give the updates? Yeah, you could just give the update there. Ross Miriam wins game one. Wow. Dan Jordan back against the wall if he wants those other two invites. May have to settle for just Milwaukee if Ross can win the next couple. Win the next game. So both games, players are shuffling. Couldn't they time that better for us? It's very inconsiderate. I agree. They're laughing at it. Look at them. <laughs> Look at them. Dan Jordan's been enjoying himself. Yes. He's been talking about the sideboard cards. And oh, did he? Crazy he, things. I saw him put up his finger at that uh, enlightened ascetic. 
There was a first pick that card. I heard. His first pick in the Crazy. second pack. It wasn't main deck. But how bad? I, I need to know. <laughs> I cannot. Uh, my, how bad the pack my has mind, to be. I, I, so I'm off I camera right now. That. I tried to conjure up what that pack would look like, and a white streak appeared in my <laughs> hair. I can't imagine the pack I would first pick in light instead of out of. I can't imagine it. I mean, I, I still, even after watching him play it and laugh about it, <laughs> figure there must have been, oh, like, yeah, a data transcription error <laughs> that, like, the guy watching the draft wrote it down wrong. Right. There was, it was just, and it was just insane, right? Because the turn before that, he smashed a smithereen yeah. something. That was the one he was particularly laughing about as I was walking by. I believe not the first thing he has smashed this weekend. <laughs> I mean, card's pretty good in this format, actually, with all yeah. the Thopter tokens running around. Oh, yeah. Pick up a little extra value off of it. All right, so here's our main match. Pro Tour Hall of Famer Shui Nakamura playing for an historic seventh win. A piece of history, anyway. Yep. But anytime you're tied with Kai in any category, <laughs> you know, you should get, like, free lunch somewhere. They say there's no such thing, but you should get one. Ooh. Mulligan for yeah. Yuhei is standing pat. He's like, I've got a one drop, I've got a seven drop, and I've got five mana. <laughs> he seems so comfortable. I mean, when you've, when you've appeared in 26 top eights, you know, Nathaniel Smith, I guarantee you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know him, I haven't talked to him. I guarantee you, he is, his heart is, you know, Pounding. pushing his shirt away from his body right now. But Shuhei Nakamura, he's done this, you know, the, the, the heart-pounding excitement of being in the top eight is probably 20 GPs behind him. <laughs> 20 GP top eights behind him. Right, right, right. Finished his match. He was just sitting at the table reading a book. Oh, yeah. Reading a book on his iPad. Looking up rolling a vine snare. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Wow. Oh. oh, boy, he's going to five cards. It's going to be a great story. <laughs> when he wins. When, if he wins this, it's going to be a great story. So, all right. Pro Tour Hall of Famer. <laughs> I'm down a game. He destroyed me. Two for one me on three straight turns. I had nothing in play when he killed me. <laughs> I mulligan to five. All right, we're checking in here on Daniel Jordan versus Ross Is that Marion. Mana Gorger Hydra? That is a Mana Gorger Hydra. That's a good card. <laughs> it is a good card. If it has time to do things. Wait, is it? How does it not have a counter? Did he miss the trigger from Daniel Jordan's he, from tactician? From Zamprin tactician, he may have missed he a counter. He must have missed the trigger. All right. In for six. You're at eight. Pass the turn. Shaman of the pack, ding you for one, grow my Hydra. Mm -hmm. Difference between having a 3-3 three, three Hydra and a 4-4 four, four right here. Okay. We'll keep you updated on what's going on here. Meantime, let's check in on our future match between Shui Nakamura and Nathaniel I was going to say, it's either going to be quick or it's going to be historic. <laughs> Herald of the Pantheon gets in for two. There's a second land from Nathaniel Smith. He plays a hanger back walker. In for two. Nathaniel falls to 16. There is Farika's Disciple. Oh, he passes the turn again. I see an Amprin Tactician here and just. Blast away. Nope. Just the attack. So Smith can block the 2 2 and then activate uh, Hangerback Walker. Yes. Turning it into a 2 2, and which then two dies tokens. and creates a couple of Thopter tokens. He chooses not to block. 
can make it two, put two tokens on it. Two count, oh, heartbeat ah. for suppression field. Got a suppression field in hand already, by the way. Wow. So Shuhei making short work of his opponent here. Interesting that he was willing to trade his tutu, the Herald, for the hanger back walker. Even though he had a hanger back walker answer queued up for next turn. Yeah. Yeah, no third lane. Smith's just really not been able to play. <laughs> Three, Three mana. Yeah. Now we've seen it all. <laughs> Gain a life. It's actually too. not the first time today I've seen that play. The three mana suppression bombs. Crashes in for seven. Good luck, Nathaniel Smith. Peels his card, yeah. lays him out, extends the hand. Shuey Nakamura's in the finals. Wow. Cool. Good for him. Playing for history. And it looks like we're getting a game just in time for a game three here. Yeah, that worked. The Between was Dan Jordan and Ross Marion. Let me see the feature match area. Let's see Ross shuffling up. And dealing out their cards. Who will face? Shuhei Nakamura, the Hall of Famer, playing for his seventh Grand Prix win in the finals. All right, we're underway. So phone bow archers for uh, Ross Merriam. He gets in for two here. Mage Ring Bully. There's a dead bird shaman. Seems pretty good at blocking and trading with Major and Bully. I might have attacked him if I was Ross, though. It's like, does Dan want to trade his two drop for your one drop? Let him, right? Oh, you need a trick. So, in comes, in comes two damage. And there's Acolyte of the Inferno. Wow, nice curve. Wild instincts for us, Mariam. Yes, wild instincts. The Thornbow Archers becomes a three-four. Fights the yeah, three-one. Great answer. Attacks for four with the Thornbow Archer, essentially, and three with the Deadbridge Salmon. Crunch takes seven. Dragon fodder is the play from Dan Jordan. Grows his majoring bully with prowess. Attacks sure. for three. No fourth land. There's Mana Gorge or Hydra. There's Fetid Imp. Mana Gorge or Hydra is a 2 2. Dan and Jordan beat it last game, though. Yeah. And Ross says, you know what, I'm going to slow things down. Majoring Bully has no choice, has to attack. Mana Gorge Hydra is just so filthy. Titan Strength is the discard. <laughs> Could have used the Titan Strength to actually save his Mage Ring Bully. Would have gone up to four toughness. But uh, maybe was unprepared to push the, man the, the Mana Gorge or Hydra that high. Yeah. Yeah. 
Double blocks thrown by archers. Makes sense. Fiery impulses. Hmm. That's that's Almost what he was right actually now. holding on to the that's what hold on to the mountain for. Oh, there's a warhorn in play. There a suppression bond in Dan Jordan's deck. Lenhor and Pass. Celestial player would get the job done here too. Yep. Grab a rock smaller. Ross is going to decline this attack. No, he, he does it. And there's Celestial Flare. Wouldn't it have been insane to wait a turn? Your opponent's got, what, four cards in hand and a bunch of untapped mana? Yeah. There's a, there's a doorway for Daniel to go through right now. There's a knight. to block Lanor Empath. Daniel's at seven. Here's five mana. There's a rock smaller. There's Knightly Valor. Uh -huh. Wow. He's going to attack with the knight. Yep, and Ross accepts the trade. It's either that or accept the trade <laughs> on the crack back, which is not as good. There's Alchemist Vile, draw a card. Veteran sidearm, attack for three. Dan is getting very low on life here. like the win on the table. He can Alchemist Vile the Knight token and attack for three. Represents lethal here. Attack for four actually with the Warhorn. Mm -hmm. Does he go for it? He's going to play you have a Force Mage. is okay and then he's gonna declare his attackers will he sacrifice his vial here no oh Daniel's making a gesture like <laughs> a little variant on the pen trick <laughs> Does he want Ross to activate the... Okay, says you can't block. There's Celestial Flare. Wow. Nice play from Daniel Jordan. Here's an Amperin Tactician. Gets in for three with his Knight token. can attack for four this turn with the Force Mage. Play 
is Eyeblade Assassin. Anti-Force Mages, the Tactician. And attacks with his four, three, Force Mage. So Daniel has a double block here if he wants to kill it. Can chump block with the Knight and hope to find an answer next turn. What's he gonna do? What would you do here, Randy? I think I double block. You're gonna lose both your guys here. Well, I think you have to try to trade and hope Ross, you know, floods or runs out of threats. Right. Or you draw really well. You have to extend the game and hope you can convert that. I don't see a line. There you go. Yep. That deals block. ten. It, is there an enshrouding mist in the future? Oh. There is. Look at that. Wow. Daniel Jordan's doing everything in his power here to claw his way back into this game. He's been under the gun pretty much from the beginning. True. With a 4 3 Eye Blight Assassin. Blocks with his Knight token. Are there any more tricks up his sleeve? Looks like there are. Mighty Leap. So he's going to trade his token and a Mighty Leap for the Eye Blight Assassin and no play from Ross Merriam. Really? Things looked so good when he had a Mana Gorge yeah. or Hydra. Oh, oh but Outland Colossus comes down. 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, Rois is champion. Striker. It's 3-4. to four. Wow. Yeah, Ross can't afford to attack. Neither can Dan. <laughs> Crazy. Rogue's Passage. Wow, Rogue's for Passage. For the win. For the win. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. You see Ross Merriam exhale a huge sigh of relief. Indeed. The triple PTQ dream ends for Dan Jordan. One, one match PTQ. short of the finals. He does get the one PTQ.